Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for those who watch this ministry from around the world. My name is Reverend Ramona Guadalupe, and this ministry comes to you from the Promises of God and Hestaba House Church Ministry. I pray that today that you will be blessed by the word that God has for you today. It's good to see each and every one of you. I know that the Spirit of God is watching over you right now as you come before the to the throne to the Holy One and to hear what God has for each and every one of us. As many of you know, things are getting escalating to the point, especially here in the United States and around the world, that is escalating to a point that is draining for each and every one of us. But God wants you to remember who he is. So if you're joining me for the very first time, I want to welcome you to the Hesaba House Church Ministry and the Promises of God. And again, my name is Reverend Ramona Guadalupe. This ministry comes to you, too, from the Promises of God. And for my viewers in Vermont, Burlington, Vermont, and throughout the state of Vermont, nationwide and those who watch this ministry from around the world let's take this moment let's go to the book of revelation the book of revelation chapter 3 verse 11 and the word of the lord says i am coming soon hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown the one who is victorious i will make a pillow in the temple of my God. Never again would they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God in the name of the city of my God and the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I also write on them my new name. Whosoever have ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let's take this moment and be in prayer. Blessed Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for your people, especially those who are listening, not only here in Vermont, Burlington, Vermont, but from around the world, my listeners. I pray that the word said, I will bring to them, blessed Father, that it will be your words, let it be that whatever I speak, let it be pleasing to you. Let it be also whatever comes out of my heart is for the edification, for your glory. We give you thanksgiving and blessing, blessed Father. Feed your people with your Holy Spirit that gives the understanding. The Holy Spirit of truth, not the spirit of lie. It is your Holy Spirit, blessed Father Jehovah, that you glorify this day, that you set apart for your people to come before your holy throne. Again, as I stand between your people, Father God, let it be that the words that they, I speak, let it be your words in the name of Jesus. Amen. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today is the 17th of July. It has been a trying time. It's only been the beginning, seven months, and within the year in the United States, it is going pretty quickly. There's a lot that is happening here in the United States. But I want you to focus on the truth, the word of God. I was speaking to someone just recently, and I was saying that God's ways are very simple. We human, we complicate things. We complicate things to benefit us and to put stumbling block. The economy that is affecting not only here in the United States, but is affecting globally. I mentioned last week that Sri Lanka, the economy collapsed. And in other parts of the world, it's collapsing too. So it's a rip it winds up to be a ripple effect and those who commit crimes, like war crimes, that is happening, that is being bombarded with bombs and, and killing other human beings, including children, civilians. 
the word of God has a word for situations like this. And it should not surprise those who are in Christ Jesus. One thing that Jesus always, Jesus mentioned, give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give unto God what belongs to God. There's a lot of protests that is happening around the United States. Christians are involved in writing affidavits against other groups of people, even among themselves, even among other Christians too. When we do that, when we write an affidavit in the court against whatever the situation, we already have lost the case. So there's a lot of hate going on. There's still racism is raising really high. The, the government that we rely on at one time, there are groups who are trying to destroy that. They want to destroy that structure. And it has been four years from the previous president that has enticed people. So my, the title today is, Are You Sick and Tired? Are You Sick and Tired? Okay, that is the title. Let's go to the song. Song 53, 52, excuse me. And the word reads, Why do you boast of evil, you mighty hero? Why do you boast all day long? You who are disgraced in the eyes of God, you who practice deceit, your tongue plots, plots destruction, is like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than speaking the truth. You love every harmful word, your deceitful tongue. Surely God will bring you down to everlasting ruins. He will snatch you up and plot you from your tent. He will uproot you from the land of the living. The righteous will see and fear. They will laugh at you saying, here now is the man who did not make God his stronghold. But trust in his great wealth and great storm and great strong by destroying others. But I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I would always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. And I will hope in your name, for your name is good. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the, the book of Psalm 52. Here it is. That last verse, 8 and 9. Giving of thanksgiving and loving and people who are God's followers of Jesus Christ. Know who they are. They rejoice and give thanksgiving to God. The song talks about this opportunist, those who relied on themselves and on their riches, and that is able to bring down those in order to be successful and relied on their wealth to the point that they will lie. We are seeing that right now. But I come to tell you to reassure those who see what is happening in the United States. See, God is into politics, and I serve a liberal God. The God that I serve is a liberal God because we don't deserve his kindness. We don't deserve his love. We don't deserve anything. But because of his grace, he has wore us by his love and mercy and compassion, he gave us Jesus. I mean, there are those who will 
would step over others and rely on their wealth for the benefit to get positions. We see it. And I'm glad that you're sick and tired because if you are sick and tired, God is sick and tired too of all the lies and manipulation, the inabilities, those who continue to support those who do wrong, they are able to fear another human being, but they don't fear God. They fear another human being. Curses the man he talks about in the scripture who hold on to go to another man and think that that person is going to save them. But the few righteous that is able to differentiate what is good and what is evil. And in the way, I'm glad that we are going through this. You might say, whoa, minister. In a way, we, I am glad. Because you are able to know the difference between right and wrong. Because what we've seen here, God has given those who know the truth, who are benefiting because they want a position in government, they are able to trample over the truth. They're able even to lie to save their skin and even able not to betray someone that says you are wrong for what you're doing. But those who are watching all this, I'm glad that this is happening because you know, and those who do wrong, they even says the truth doesn't matter. The truth doesn't even matter. They are willing to even want to separate themselves from the union of this country to oppress, suppress, be in position in leadership for power and money and oppress. I'm glad in a way that we're going through this because we're able to know the difference between right and, wrong, right and wrong. And you know what is happening. It's all lies and wrong. You know, in the scripture, it talks about, let's go to Amos. Let's go to Amos chapter 8, beloved. The word reads from the NIV. This is what the sovereign God, the sovereign Lord show me a basket ripe in fruit. What do you see, Amos? He asked, a basket ripe fruit. I answered, then the Lord said to me, the time is ripe for the people, Israel. I will spare them no longer. And that day, declares the sovereign Lord, the songs in the temple were turned wailing, many, many bodies floating everywhere silent. Hear this, you who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land, saying, when would the new moon be over that we may sell, sell grains and the Sabbath be ended that we may market wheat? skimping on the measure, boasting the prices and cheating with dishonest scales, buying the poor with silver and the needy with a pair of sandals, selling even the sweeping with the, with the wheat, wheat. The Lord has sworn by himself, the pride of Jacob, I will never forget anything they have done. Will not the land tremble for this? And all who live in it mourns? The whole land will rise like the Nile. It will be stirred up and then sunk like the river of Egypt. In that day, declares the sovereign Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darkness the earth 
in broad daylight. I would turn your religious festival into mourning and all your singing into weeping. And I will make all you wear sackcloth and shave your head. I will make the time like a morning for the only sun and the end of it like a bitter day. The days are coming, declares the Lord, sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land, not a famine of food or thirst for water, but the famine of hearing the word of the Lord. The people scatter from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for words of the Lord, but they will not find it. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading. To differentiate the difference between good and evil. The prices. They are people who gouge in the prices. Yes, that this uh, economy that is not good at this moment. But there are people who are taking advantage of this moment, beloved. Gouging the prices up on everything. Taking advantage of the poor. Throwing them out into the street. Raising the rent to the point in New York City alone, the price for an apartment, for one bedroom apartment, not even one bedroom. If you look at it, it looks like a closet. Over $5,000 per month in the city of New York. And throwing away those who are working, who are making good salary, but they can't afford that. Taking advantage of the situation, what is happening in Russia, what they're doing, that has become a ripple effect. But God remembers, just like the song 82, that God himself will deal with those who do such an awful things. And those who raise the prices to take advantage of the situation that we are living in and not caring for another humanity, for humanity at all. You know, God, Jehovah God, when he tells Amos, this was the fourth vision. Amos was a prophet. And this is the fourth vision that Jehovah showed Amos, what he's going to do to the people. Because the people... And this is happening today. It's not one group of person. It's a whole lot of people that they are trying to get as much as they can out of the poor. The fruit, the basket, the ripe basket. I answered, this is Amos. Then the Lord said, the time is right for my people and I will not spare them any longer. And that day declares the sovereign Lord that there will be the temple, the temple he would turn to wailing and many bodies. You know, one thing about it, beloved, God is serious of what he does. He is safe, faithful. God gives us things and he watches what we do with what he gives us. Beloved, this lying and those who believed and did destruction, not only in the capital of the United States, but they did it to every single human being in this country. They rape the capital. They rape every citizen. And these were policemen. These were firefighters. They were attorney. They were grandmoms and grandpa and children and college students and regular citizen lawmakers. And the list goes on and on that took January the 6th and raped every single citizen in this country. But God is faithful. Those who are the righteous in God, they will see the fall when God disciplines them. See, God is merciful. But when God says it's enough, it's enough. And Jesus, the song on chapter 3 on Book of Revelation, chapter 11, 
that he's coming soon. You see all these things that is happening, beloved. It's because the time is coming soon. The new Jerusalem. There will be no cursing and there will be no lying. And those who continue to do these 10 things to take advantage of the situation, they're not going to get away with it, beloved. But I'm speaking to you. I'm glad that you are sick and tired because the God that I bring to you today, he is sick and tired too. But one thing about God that he does not want anyone, anyone to be destroyed. He wants to, for them to repent. Repent from doing evil. But the evil one continues to get worse and worse and worse. And beloved, I'm not going to stand here before you and tell you that it's going to be rosy next year, the following year. As time go by, like the, the, like the prophet. That Jehovah told the prophet, what do you see? The basket, a basket of fruit. It's nice and ripe. When Jehovah lifts himself up from his throne and tell his son in the right hand, go get your bride. The righteous one. And those who continue to do bad things, let them be. Let them be. Because we who are truly the children of God, who don't go out and write affidavits for the court, for abortion, for whatever, to get your agenda. Oh, beloved, let them. Because we come to our Lord Jesus Christ, he's our attorney, and we have Jehovah that is our God. This is why we are witness to what is happening, beloved. So this time, that basket is nice and ripe. Jehovah is going to send his son. We don't know the time and we don't know the date, but we know the season when we start seeing all these things. So beloved, I want you to hold on to what you have. Like in the book of Revelation chapter 3, that it talks about Jesus. This is Jesus' words. Beloved. And it says, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one would take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillow in the temple of God. Never again will they leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. Those who continue to do evil, let them be, but pray for them. And hope that their hearts will change, beloved. And do what is right and pleasing to God. Turn to God for his word and reach out for the truth. Jesus says the truth will set you free. Become knowledgeable. But the most important thing is love. And I cannot continue. I will continue to emphasize love because that's who Jehovah is. That's who Jesus is, and that's who the Holy Spirit of God is, love. After all that is said and done, those who want to grab and oppress and step on and sell things and abuse people and gouge you the price. I mean, he talks about the scale. Even the dust with the wheat, they, they mix dust with the wheat, wheat and hike up the prices. So, beloved, the time, we know the season. We don't know the date when Jesus is coming and the time, but we know the season. And if you have not received Jesus to be part of God's kingdom, you say these words. Ask Jesus, confess your sin. Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. 
As soon as you say those words, and of course you have to be baptized, Jesus will come into your life and sup with you. In other words, be with you. And if you need a church, give me a call. I will connect you to whatever church in the area that God will lead you. Be in prayer. The time is short. If you're sick and tired of what is happening, because God is sick and tired of us too. But with, because of his grace and his love, his hope for those who do bad things that will turn around because even Jesus says tax collect, prostitute and tax collector will be the first one to enter the kingdom of God than those who go to church and consider themselves to be righteous. So we must be careful. We got to pray for those who do bad things. And I know you say, oh, they're terrible. How am I going to pray? Guess what? Jesus wants you to. So we pray for them. So we pray that in hope that their hearts would change. If you're sick and tired, pray for them. Stop writing those affidavits. Stop walking around with your flag and stuff. It doesn't mean anything to God. God is sick and tired too. If you're sick and tired, can you imagine how God feels? He's sick and tired too. I don't blame God. He gets sick and tired, beloved. So let's turn to God and know the difference. Again, I know that this thing that is happening in the United States and around the world, it is for our benefit so that we should choose because God gives us choices. God does not force himself on you. And I definitely don't want to force myself. My job is to give you the word to encourage you so you could see the difference what the wicked are doing and the righteous sitting back and seeing all this wickedness. And our job is continue to show the love of Jesus Christ. Let's take this moment and be in prayer. There is hope, hold on, because he's coming soon. All the stars are lined up. We know the season. We don't know the time and day, but we know the season. And that new Jerusalem and the righteous one will be sitting next to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness sake. God is so good. Let's be in prayer. Blessed Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, I pray for your people. Protect them and guide them, their goings and coming. I place them into your care and into your hands. Blessed Father, give them the strength that they need, especially those who are sick. Give the pastor the strength for them not to give up. I pray for the President of the United States that you give them the strength every day. And those who wag their tongue, Blessed Father, you silence those tongues. So, Blessed Father, I placed every government from around the world to do what is right for their people. I place these people in this prayer and your people protect, especially the children, Blessed Father. Protect them from themselves, protect them from the hands of adults. Watch their goings and coming. Send your angels and put them around them for protection. Watch every person that is trying to do your will, my Lord. Take care of them. Into your hands I place them. In the name of Jesus, amen. Until God brings us back together again next week, may the peace of God be with all of you and the love of God surround you in Jesus' name, amen.